Hi, everyone. Dr. Gold from Peak Human Labs. And today I have a guest, Mr. Sol Paul John Bejarano. And he's a biohacker par excellence at the top of his game and 20 years experience. And he's going to give us some insights into his journey, as well as some pearls on how he has actually reversed his age. So stay tuned and we'll see you on the other side. All right, Sol, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, Dr. Sanjeev, thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Where are you located? Where are you at right now? Where are we catching you? I'm in South Florida in the Boca Raton area. I've okay. been here for, for most of my life, but I also lived in New York for a little while. And I was just there yesterday. So I'm glad to be back here so I can use a nice mic to uh, record with you. <laughs> thank you so much. A mutual friend of ours introduced us. And I think our viewers are going to really enjoy today, basically hearing from a biohacker like yourself, who's basically made it their, their mission to to optimize their life and reverse aging. So maybe before we get into the science part, do you mind giving us a little background on your, how'd you get into this whole space? What's your background and what's your kind of story? Yeah. So I've been dabbling in the biohacking space now for 20 years or so at different levels. Oh my God, you look pretty but... <laughs> hey, I'm glad I got it. Hey, it's working. But I it was, my mom was a licensed esthetician. She's a licensed esthetician and she worked for Dr. Nicholas Pericone back in the day in 2004 and five. And I got into his literature, the Pericone diet, which was phenomenal talking about anti-inflammatory diet and learned about like alpha lipoic acid and supplementation. So I maintain somewhat of a healthy track over the years. That's also changed too. I, I in the startup world, being, building a company, I was grinding very hard. So I had my years as well of decline and things that I dealt with and so on. So learning from that, it's how optimized, but it was really, I had a life changing, changing experience when my dad unfortunately had a stroke in uh, his mid fifties. And practically his life was in, in a way taken away. His ability to really live life to the fullest was, was no longer there. I was visiting him at nursing home. And in that process, I got to see firsthand what aging looked. His neighbors, his roommates and stuff. There was always somebody new in there every six months or so. Had dementia. How old was he? Sorry. He was How in old his was he? Mid-50s, 56. And so oh, so, mid -50s, six, yeah. so did he die from dementia or? No, he didn't die. So that was, so he had a stroke. Oh, sorry. And then, so I got, in visiting him, I got to see firsthand what ah, aging ah. looked like. Yeah. Sorry. Make that clear. But, uh, so, yeah, so that, uh, yeah, I got to see what diabetes looks like and amputations look like and dementia and all of these generative diseases. So it was really, I came to a conclusion that aging sucks. It's very, it's not a graceful death. And a lot of times these people are spent their last years alone. They barely a lot of them barely get visitors. And, and so it's, it's a shock to see that firsthand and, and also dealing with just the, the average healthcare system on how a lot of these things are treated. It was very difficult getting supplements to him. And I had to go through a lot of hurdles to fight for vitamin D and, and get a, a multivitamin and so on. I ended up bringing that in myself and a private aid and a bunch of stuff, but it just shows you that we need to take care of ourselves. We need to get educated about our own health, be vigilant about optimizing, look at what we eat, the things that we take, and be able to track progress as we get older so we can have a long and graceful aging process that we can get to enjoy our lives as we get older to the fullest. And especially if we have success in life, we're working hard, we're meeting our goals and things, we're getting all this knowledge, all this stuff we're learning all the time. And it would suck to just lose it, start losing it in your 60s and 70s when there's so much potential for more life to be had and it's really extend your health span. So when I talk about longevity, I don't talk about living a long time in this decrepit state like you would find in, in, in the average older person, but really holding my full physical and mental ability to live life to the fullest in my late 80s, 90s, 100 plus is my goal with all this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> definitely, I can completely relate to that. I just, I want to come back and you said your dad had a stroke in his fifties, which is very young, relatively yeah. in today's <laughs> thinking. He was so, working I mean, very hard. One hell yeah. of a he, over, he overworked himself. He didn't get enough sleep, just pushing his body to the limits. And it was unfortunate. And, and if I had the knowledge that I have now back then, I could have helped him a ton, but that's one of the reasons that I decided to really be in charge of my own health and be able to optimize myself to avoid 
any of those catastrophes. And now I'm also sharing that with others so other people can avoid those catastrophes as much as possible. Yeah. So what was the first one of the first things you started doing on the journey? So you began this journey, you said, like around 20 years ago. What have you what are the first steps you took? I understand probably like measurements. Yeah. Testing. So blood work is key. Back then I wasn't as informed and we didn't have all these podcasts like yours and Andrew Huberman podcasts and all this stuff out there for us to self-educate. So it was a little bit more difficult. And some of this blood work was also quite expensive to go beyond your normal blood panel that you find at your annual checkups. I did what I could when I read a lot of great books on it. And so slowly start adding, stacking up, but diet starts with the food that we eat. It's so key. Food is medicine. And so it's important to yeah. really optimize your entire, what you eat. But it wasn't until I started, when I started really getting into the science is when I looked at the hallmarks of aging. It's a report that was originally published in 2013 and then was updated again a little over a year ago. And now there is, there was nine back then. Now there's 12 pillars of aging, hallmarks of aging. What I do over time is looking at the literature of why we age, I started to put together a strategy and a protocol to address each of the 12 hallmarks of aging and optimize my full body in that process, and then measure myself mm -hmm. as, as we go along. <laughs> so yep. maybe let's take it for our viewers, go through these hallmarks and how you're addressing it. Cause I think that's something that our viewers might, might be really enlightening to them. Sure. Yeah. The, and I'll use a little cheat sheet as well for, so the so primary hallmarks for the aging process, you can, people can read the full paper on it and, but just to go over them from a high level. The first one is genomic instability. Essentially, it's, it's damage to our DNA. And this is an accumulation of damage to our DNA over time that happens from exposure to radiation, to toxins, and all sorts of internal and external factors. There, we need to put together a strategy to minimize exposure to, uh, to DNA uh, damaging agents. And so there's quite a bit of things you can do for it. So with everything, diet is going to be part of it. So it's always a diet component to each of these protocols. So, but from a high level, so the fruits and vegetables are important within that in for the antioxidants, you have green tea as well, contains the, uh, what's how you pronounce it? Catechins, cat, cat, catechins that are the need protective, they protect your DNA. So you have exercise as well. So that's really key with all of these areas that really helps you throughout. And then you have obviously sleep is part of that in and um, so one, you know, protocol doesn't just only one, but really across all the other ones, but you start getting into the supplementation um, areas of vitamin C is powerful antioxidant that protects your DNA. You also have zinc plays a crucial role in um, DNA like repairs. You have selenium. I think a drop of selenium is a trace mineral that's essential for the activity of certain antioxidant enzymes, NAC and acetylcysteine. Uh, that's also a precursor to it's a major antioxidant in the body resveratrol as well, found in grapes and so on. And then you have NMN, neocotamine riboside, mm. <laughs> it's NR, and then neocotamine monoglucotide. monoglucotide, yeah, NMN. <laughs> yeah. So that's precursor to NAD, and I take those at nighttime along with glycine. Sorry to interrupt you. You're taking all of these supplements just for this one hallmark of aging. Obviously, it has impacts on the other hallmarks as well, but you yeah. specifically are taking this cocktail yeah, so this, I looked at, so what, yeah, what I did is I researched each of the hallmarks of aging and I looked at everything from emerging therapies to supplements and nutrition, yeah. exercise, and I put together that stack. And then I went across and did that for each of them, but there's a lot of overlap. NAD helps in one area, helps with the other. So they're not all unique. They're exercise. So, so there's a common denominator across all of them. And then I looked at a Swiss cheese. There's no silver bullet or one solution, right? Swiss cheese has a little bit of holes. So you stack that one on top of that one, top of that one. And eventually when you have all these stacks, you're covering all of these different areas. So that's it's a bit of how I think about yeah. it. Not necessarily one for each one, but yeah, across covers across many. The way that I, I tend to explain the genome instability one is that as we're aging, the DNA starts to unpack itself like it doesn't, it's not as structured as it used to be. It starts to like, the histones start to maybe become somewhat unstable. And so if it's unpackaged not the right way, certain genes can start getting expressed improperly, I guess. Uh, 
but what you're basically saying, it looks like all these antioxidants obviously have some impact on genome instability and um, yeah, that this seems to be, and some of these minerals as well, like selenium and zinc. Yeah, chronic stress could also accelerate aging and uh, increase DNA damage. Yeah. So really having a stress management protocol as part of it as well. What do you do for chronic stress management? Like, how do you handle that? What's, what, what's oh, man. part of your routine for that? Well, and how do, you know you're doing, how do you know it's working? The way you feel, you start there, <laughs> and yeah. then you and also right. within the within your blood work, you could also measure cortisone levels within that. So that's part of building a really healthy routines. I think it's when we get into more in depth into that. But the, I have a morning routine, I have afternoon routine, I have things throughout the day that I put in place for mental health. It's really important. That's part of it. And then as well as the right supplementation, ashwagandha can help lower cortisone levels, L-theanine as well, especially if you have caffeine and things like that, that can really help balance out. Yeah. There's a whole lot of things. There's just some of the high levels, but, but meditation, um, right. I think a lot of stuff that helps here also helps in, in, in the anti-aging helps reduce stress. There's exercise is important. Cold plunge. It's also, it can really help reset your your stress hormones and cold plunge has tremendous benefits in helping your body boost your dopamine levels and so on. So you can get a nice natural high in dopamine that doesn't have a crash like you would with other things, all those things incorporating. And I think it's, it's, it is really important. Like you're intentional about these routines, not just randomly doing it, but actually write it down and have a system in place. So when you wake up, you don't have to think about or refigure it out every day. What should I do? It's like you, I have it written down. So I like, yeah, that seems like, to boom, me boom. like the, if somebody was to listen to this, just like number one, and you've listed off like 10 different things that you possibly would do. I'm wondering, how do you keep track of it? Uh, and what's your secret? And, and what are the other options out there? So uh, I come up with these things and I, and then I write it down and then I make it accessible. One of the places I have it is right on my phone, on my iPhone notes. And I just have it as bullets just to remind myself, because sometimes you, you might forget a particular routine and then you forget it that day and you don't do it the other day. And for you're like, oh yeah, what happened to that? I forgot about that. So I write it all down to just keep track. I remember it by now, but I just reference it sometimes to make sure that I hit everything. And yeah, and I go through it and you could also so just set reminders. Notes, you're just keeping a list in notes and- uh, Yeah, I just guess. in bullets, in the notes, just like bullet it yeah. down, do this, do that. And it really is like a checklist that I go through. It's actually quite extensive, but, but if you do it on a regular basis, you just, you do, you go through it faster. I also don't think it should be like a three hour thing either with, because that can really cut into productivity in your day. Yeah. So I, I try to make it as quick as possible. And I also don't have to do it all in the morning. You could do some things in the afternoon, some things at night. And so you balance it off. To me, productivity is really important and make sure like you're actually getting to work and you don't start work at noon because the whole day you've been doing, the whole morning you've been doing routines. You have to balance things off in, in that process. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, I know I interrupted you. So you were talking about no. the second one was <laughs> telomere attrition. I believe. Yeah. Yes. Uh, telomere attrition. So these yeah. are, uh, telomeres are essentially the protective end caps of the chromosomes. Mm -hmm. And over time, they shorten with each cell division. And it gets to a point where the cell can no longer divide and they get a state of senescence or cell death. And essentially that's one of the big reasons people die eventually. So there's a whole regimen around that to maintain the telomere length and slow down its shortening process as much as possible. So always, I think at the top of the list is always like diet. And then from the diet is supplementation, precision supplementation. So according to blood work and really balanced off, too much is not good. Too little is, is also not enough. So you have to find that middle ground, that perfect. And that's why blood work is important. I do it on a, on a, every three months or so to see, hey, this helped, this not help. And so I, even selenium, as I mentioned earlier, I take one drop, not two, not three, it's one drop specifically. And, and I measure that. And my magnesium as another marker, not to jump too much here, but magnesium, I have my own protocol. I take five different types of magnesiums and I have the, some that are upper in the morning and some that are nighttime, that are downers at nighttime. Hmm. Ones that are mixed tend to be have uppers and downers at the same time. So it's like a little, they try to balance each other out. So it doesn't make you tired, but I like to separate them. So I take single servings in all of these. And um, 
Yeah. So I get a lot of questions that's, from that's, patients about magnesium and maybe, do you mind just, I think let's go a little bit more in depth there because it's something okay. that viewers might be interested in the different types of magnesium and how are you sure. dosing it differently or taking different times of the day? Um, okay. So I have my own kind of magnesium master blend when in the morning and I think I had it written down somewhere, here, but I don't, but magnesium malate, magnesium malate yeah. is a bunch of more of an upper. And so yeah. I take that in the morning. And so you have uh, magnesium, malate, magnesium, elemental magnesium. I shoot for a total in, uh, between six, five and uh, 600 milligrams of uh, elemental magnesium per day within morning and nighttime. Mali is an important for the morning for me. And then a magnesium L-theronate, which also yeah. affects, helps with the brain. It, and it, it goes through the blood brain barrier as well. So wait for that. And then I take another magnesium that's C derived. Uh, it's, it's, it's more raw C derived magnesium that has a few different things. So that affects the body in, in a different way. At nighttime, I take magnesium glycinate, which is very, for someone just getting into it, usually that's the one that I recommend people to get into it. They, it's easy on the stomach, but it could also, could make some people a little bit tired as well. So that's why I prefer to take it at nighttime. And then I take magnesium taurate, which is great for the muscles, muscle repair and things like that. So those are like my five magnesiums. I do have in my cabinet, I have a few other ones that, that I take here and there, but those are like my core five separated okay. that way. And I think that's, and if I were to show you magnesium levels, they're like, like right in the uh, perfect optimized zone. When you're doing your blood test, you're not just doing the regular metabolic panel. You're saying that you're doing a selenium level, level and you're checking your magnesium and what else are you checking right. in vitamin status or mineral status? Are you doing some other blood tests regularly? Yeah, so month? for a while I was using Inside Tracker, and I st still am. Yeah. So Inside Tracker has about right. 50 biomarkers, including your biological yeah. age as well. And I take my biological age with a few others. And I'm about to do a new one with True Diagnostics, that yeah, one. That's great. But between, and something I meant to mention earlier, but between these different, which, what, whichever one you, you uh, choose, between five and 10 years, and reverse my age. You mentioned earlier, I look young. Yeah, I've been able to track so that let's and just, reverse let's, my age. Let's, I, I want to ask some more questions about that. That that part's really interesting. Sure. Because I've, I've done about three, 400 patients already. So I, I see the numbers, what people are like. But so are you saying that from when you began that the your age has reversed? Or you just have always been from the very beginning? No, when be, you first before, started testing? Yeah, before I wasn't tracking that. I think something that helped me before like a lot of the advanced stuff was happening, I started taking alpha lipoic acid at an earlier age and 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 even that one had to be optimized to make sure that's not the I don't do the blend of synthetic synthetic and that they usually they blend them together or they usually have synthetic. I take only alpha lipoic acid and then I take low amounts and I also cycle them. And that, and I take that with biotin as well. It's, a, it's important to take it together. That was like, kept me, I think helped me earlier on before a lot of this man and all this stuff was out there and known. During that time, I didn't measure my biological age, but I can feel that I was young and I was doing the, the basics like your omega threes and your B vitamins and your magnesium. So that kind of helped me throughout those earlier years. And then I started to measure it and yeah, and so I'm between five and 10 years, and I'm very interested what true diagnostics is going to say. Is it My your first to... time doing a true diagnostic test? Have you done one before? Yes, it's, it's going to be, this is going to be the first one. And my goal with that is to get into the rejuvenation Olympics with Brian Johnson, get on the leaderboard. So I look exciting. I'm very interested to see what you yeah. guys will be. We should have a, yeah. another I mean, if, conversation after that's that you get. The yeah. Leader. If I, you have to take three tests and so on as a part of it, but if I get the same that I did with some of these other ones, I might potentially be on the leaderboard because I've, we'll see, but that 10 years reversing your age, it puts you at 25% of your, what you reversed my, your age. And, and so that, that would put me in the 20, in the top 25. So, but we'll see what true diagnostic says and I'll work to optimize that. <laughs> yeah. I've seen all types, even people who are athletes and stuff, not necessarily have uh, reduction in age because there's so much stress they've gone through in their life sometimes over yeah. time. Yeah, and right now- Increase your biologic age. Yeah, exactly. Some of those, yeah, some of the athletes, they, like you said, they can increase their age. And especially if you overstimulation of, of mTOR by overstimulating with protein and uh, amino acids. And uh, there's all sorts of things that really can speed up the rate of aging, but give you great short-term benefits, lean muscle, 
easier to grow muscle. So you look great in the gym, but internally you're like speeding up that clock. So it's, it, I had to find that balance between eating meat and not too much meat and should go vegan and so on. So mm -hmm. I have like my that's own. That's very interesting. I think let's talk about that because <laughs> okay, yeah. that's the critical part here is find the balance between, we know that people can have caloric restriction of 15, 20% and live a much longer life, but they may not have, they may have not necessarily so much ability to gain as so much lean body mass. So I guess at the end of the day, it's, it, there's a balance between the right now, <laughs> feeling good right now, which a lot of people are trying to work on their outside looks and or worse is how much you're looking at the long-term longevity aspect. So how do you make that decision and how important is the getting certain lean body mass or uh, for you? Yeah, no, I think that it depends on in the, in each individual's goal because not everybody wants to live a long time. I think a lot of people will when you ask them, oh yeah, you live past 100. Oh, I don't want to live past 100. I want to be, they have a, a mental picture of being really decrepit and not being able to barely walk and things. And so I get that. So I think the first is, what is your goal? And that goal can change as you learn more and you get more data and you do more blood work and you look at the research. Definitely that goal can be updated over time. But having that goal in mind, I think is important because you build your routines and your protocol around that. So for someone who just like, hey, I don't like someone says, I, I want to just live 70, 80 healthy. I'm not really want to be like past 100 and so on. And that's their views. Then I think for them, like eating meats and if they're more on the carnivore diet side of things, I think for them, I think it works just fine. If they feel good and they are healthy and they're building their muscle the way they want, and then I think it works for them. And But for, we were saying someone who's who wants to live past that and you really want to find that balance to where I ended up with it is that, so I'm not vegetarian, but I limit to one pound of high quality, organic grass fed pasture raised beef, ground beef per week. And that pound is divided into three servings of six ounces, about six ounces each. And that for me, it, it feels good in my body. Like I said, I get that protein throughout the week. I don't, I don't feel like it's the guessing game too, like how much you're stimulating your mTOR and, and growth hormones, For Sure. but that is where I'm at. And then the amount of protein too, that I take is it's important. So I am people in general, they should be between 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.8 ounces per pound. So for how much you weigh the I'm, I try to get in my own protocol about weight close to 200 pounds and muscle. And I'm in the range of about 150 grams of protein per day. But most of it comes from plants. Plant-based protein, uh, I think, mm -hmm. is where, where I'm at with that. So I do eat uh, other proteins, sardines. I minimize fish because Why of- Why do you minimize uh, fish? Because of microplastics right. and heavy metals. And also because we're destroying our oceans. So- that's my personal thing. I don't want to overly do eating fish every day. I eat fish like once or twice a month. And then when I do eat fish, I avoid things like the big fish, swordfish and things like that, that tend to have more heavy metals and plastic toxins, so toxins tested, across everything. Uh, have you tested your heavy metal? Yes, I, I have. Yeah. And it's interesting. So it's, it is within normal range. But uh, ketamine is, I'm adjusting that a little bit. And I think that comes from some of the cacao that I take and mm -hmm. so on. So I don't think it comes from the fish side because I don't eat that much fish at all. But omega-3s are so important. So I do supplement with omega-3s and I have my own protocol on that one as well. So I try to reach two grams of EPA per day and minimum, and then try to keep it under one gram of DHA. So too much DHA can affect your hormones. And a lot of the standard omega-3 supplements have both. So I separate them. I have yeah. a regular one that has DHA and EPA, but a, about a gram. I take that in the morning and I boost it with more EPA. And then I take some actually in um, the afternoon and then more at nighttime. If someone who's trying to lose weight, increasing their omega-3 intake could definitely help with that. So that's part of something yeah. that I do in my protocols. But the quality is also really important because the omega-3s could also have toxicity. So you have to really research the brand, third-party tested, and then mm -hmm. you want to keep your omega-3s in the fridge because they can oxidize. And also omega-3s that come in liquid, 
you might get a better bang for the buck to do it that way. But mm -hmm. when it's when they're exposed to the air, it could oxidize. Mm -hmm. And so I keep it all capsules, highest quality. That's one that I really try to get the get the best of the best in, in that area. And then again, I separate it <clears throat> to two, two grams or more of EPA and one gram or less of DHA, depending if I'm trying to lose visceral fat or anything like that slim up, then I increase the omega threes and great before as a pre-workout, by the way. So I, I take that a lot of omega threes before a workout. Yeah. So somebody listening know, to I'm you like might going down the path is, of these things. You no, know, this is perfect. I think I want to keep it. Yeah, exactly. I want to get very relevant for our viewers out there. Someone listening to this conversation would say, Hey, this guy is like super motivated. And yeah, he's super motivated. He's taking 20 different things. He's got all these protocols, but Hey, me, I'm not, I, I don't know if I can do that. And I guess I want to ask you, you're, you've been out there inspiring other people to kind of learn about their body and become biohackers themselves. Have you seen any success stories? I love to hear that apart from you, because you're like a special person <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure everyone's like that. How, how yeah, have yeah. you seen, what type of stories have you seen about other people who are able to take this up and, and how do you see their journey is? When I started coaching first was my immediate family and some of my close right. friends and just one that comes to mind is my mother. She is in her mid sixties. She was getting, starting to get a brain fog, fatigue throughout the day. She wasn't having as much energy, which is normal with someone in that age. And she was having to take a nap within the afternoon often. But the main thing I think was like, just she wasn't as sharp, right? Just like that mental decline that starts to happen. So I put her on, we did blood work and I put her on a basic stack with things specific to longevity. And immediately, like she started to have so much more energy. She no longer needed to take a nap. She said she hasn't felt this great in years, more mental clarity. Her inspiration started to come back for doing art and doing other activities. And she just felt like she gained another 10 years is what, is what she said. For her at her age, something and gender, there's something appropriate for her. And I think with each person is really based on your age, your gender, your goals, and then your current state, if, if you're overweight or if you're not, and you're going, all that comes into play to balancing that off. But the, I've been biohacking like these hard to solve cases. So generally the, because my, my main function just in my background is I'm a fractional chief marketing officer and I work with biohacking companies and so on in that area and launching and scaling businesses. And so I have a, a tech and marketing background, went to harder for that and, and all sorts of stuff. So within that, the biohacking side is something I've done for me, for myself initially. And then I start consulting like with clients and I also in the process of getting more certifications in that area. And that's why I haven't been public speaking about it as much. I've spoken at the Biohacker Expo a couple of months ago, the, kick, kicked the conference off before Gary Brecka spoke there as well. And so mm -hmm. the I'm just starting to get out there because it is it is something that's been kept more private to like elite athletes, some influencers, influencers that have like millions of followers who have their own coaching program that I've helped scale. And within that, I've been coaching inside of their programs in, in their masterminds. And that's, I think, what started to build that confidence. I started to get into those group coachings and you had like all the coaches there that were very, the reason people signed up for, and then I, and then 90% and of the questions were geared more towards me on this biohacking side and, and this kind of supplementation and food and things like that. That started to build my confidence to speak more about it. And then I started working with clients, my own clients in the marketing space. And I use that kind of as a bonus that you work with me. We're going to help scale your business. And I'm almost going to help you scale mm. it, optimize your health. And, and so I've been dealing with a lot of like cases of people who have gone to doctors who have done all these tests, who spend th thousands of dollars and they don't have a solution for their issue. Sometimes it's hormonal. Their hormones are completely mm. out of whack and whether estrogen or testosterone. And so I help optimize that. And, and then other things with losing weight that they can't do it. And before, so I don't do anything that's prescription-based. Everything is uh, plant-based and things that you can buy over the counter and food and exercise and routines and that kind of stuff. Now, that's your first layer. Now, there is a point where if that doesn't work, then maybe you can look into peptides, 
hormonal replacement therapy. That's, that's like another, but after you tried a lot of the other things as well, then you, you can resort to that. And for that, you do need to work with a doctor. And then with all these, I do recommend that they find a functional medicine doctor that can work with them that mm -hmm. understands what they're trying to do. And, and it's going to look more, more than just, just your basic blood panel, but can work with you to optimize these things. Okay. That totally, actually, that, that sounds like really good advice. I'm wondering, so where do you see the whole bio biohacker kind of movement going? Where do you think it's going to, what do you think is going to happen um, to how people are going to be transforming their health? And where, where do you think the next things that the movement is definitely growing because of the recent years, a lot of great works came out of the Sinclair labs with David Sinclair out of Harvard. That's been pushing the message. And I think yourself and others that are creating content online and these podcasts and these YouTube channels, like they're becoming more and more popular and more people are becoming aware that this is possible. I'm also a student of Dr. Mark Hyman and the things that he talks about in food is medicine. And so I think now there's just been more of a general awareness. Still, the majority of the population are not aware, but I think it's just growing and growing. So I, I hope that in the future, the government can participate more in this. I think we need we need like a, a general, what's it called? The general, surgeon general. Yeah, I think we need a surgeon general that's a biohacker. Right. <laughs> you should, you, should, and, you know, and then, and then I, and then, but it's difficult to take time because there's just so many corporations that make money off of this, money off of cheap products that are addicting, that are not good for you. And then the medical system makes a lot of money in sick care. But preventative medicine, I think it's important. And I think over time, as it becomes more and more mainstream, people will first do it on their own. And then eventually, hopefully, insurance companies will start to cover more of these uh, you know, blood work panels and these preventative measures that people should be doing. It's going to save the country billions and billions of dollars in healthcare. And yeah. that's a whole yeah. conversation, but that healthcare is getting really expensive. And over the next 10, 20, 30 years, if something's not done about it, it could really affect the entire economy when you have such a huge expense coming from Medicaid, Medicare, and sick care. Anyways, uh, hopefully there could be some <laughs> change when from a high level that can affect millions of people. And I think the key is preventive medicine and, um, and yeah. Yeah. Like How do you so. think that the U S is uh, U S biohackers are doing, uh, compared to around the world? Like where do you see innovation happening, new learnings? Where is this, any thoughts on that? Obviously like people like Gary Brecca and Dave Asprey are like, leading. yeah, I learn from a wide audience and not everybody's based in the U S and I think throughout Europe, there's incredible conferences that are happening and tests and things. And um, there's some things that are more accepted and used more in certain countries. Um, saunas, there yeah. we know about it here, but in Finland, like in other places around there, it's really a it's more accepted and more mainstream as a health benefits and done more on a routine basis. More people are doing it. Mm -hmm. Now with gyms having saunas in them and so on, I think more people have access to them now than before. And, but I do a sauna four times a week and yeah, there's, there's always a handful of people there, eight to 10, to 12 gets a little packed, but there's tens of thousands of people in that, in that radius. It's still not that many who are doing it on a regular basis. Some things are accepted more. And then there's other strategies uh, as well that not to go too much off of other subjects, but other strategies as well that are more accepted in other areas that that not here as well, okay. like ozone therapy. You know, right. so yeah, ozone, that's one that's yes, utilized yes, a lot yes. in Europe and throughout the world, but in the U.S., it's not not utilized as much. Yeah. I do ozone therapy, by the way, so I have a whole machine for it and everything, and that's some oh, that's wow. one that's of my amazing. protocols that I yeah we couldn't even bring it to Canada. I was at a conference, but unfortunately, we can't bring it to Canada right now. It's not a Health Canada approved, unfortunately. <laughs> Exactly. But, uh, yeah. yeah. And what's of, that's approved. Great things. Yeah. And, and in Europe, it's utilized a lot as regular process yeah. to, to get rid of heavy metal toxins, mold toxins. Mm -hmm. Dave Asprey talks a lot about that and right. how he got rid of mold toxins and Dr. Mark Hyman as well. And when he had mold toxins and helps with that mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. helps with pod, post cove syndrome and things like that. Syndrome. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I think for our viewers to understand, this is, I think, good. It's intro. It's a good intro. And my sense is that people should get the idea that it's okay to have a coach 
like this type of thing is a journey. Like you had this journey now yeah. for 20 years. And I think the message I would want our listeners to take is that it is a good idea to have a coach in this man, because it's a huge world. It's not something yeah, you can just go and start learning. It, it takes time and effort to learn and probably not a bad idea to invest in, in coaching because this move, this field is moving very quickly and you can, it's much easier to learn off somebody else who has already kind of done some of the trials and figure out what's working because there's no real recipe book out there in the world. Nobody's really figured out the secret cure to reversing aging. It's like you said, it's a very much individualized approach. People have their kind of, they're developing their own kind of protocols, but we're still in the early days as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and uh, so that's my kind of third recommendation when people ask me on like versus goal setting set, yeah. understand, understand your goals, what you want to do. Like I was talking about earlier, cause that can change the protocol and that can get updated yeah. as you learn more Two is get the blood work, get some data. So if you can get some basic blood work, that's a start. But if you have the budget for it, inside tracker is one option. And then now I'm using a uh, function health from Dr. Mark Hyman. And that has over hundred biomarkers. And that one is incredible for 497. You can get something that in the past I've spent like $3,000 on to get something that's not even in, as complete as that. So that's a great one. And then if you have the budget for it, you could also get a DNA methyl test. So that's something you do once in your lifetime and you understand your, what your body methylates and doesn't. So you can supplement right, right. precision supplementation on, on supplements specific to your DNA and your ability to D to methylate or not. But with that said, if you don't have the budget for a DNA methylation test, maybe not initially, just take everything methylated form anyways, the highest quality methyl folates, methyl B12s, methyl multivitamin, and, and then eventually try to get a test so you can have sure. more data on exactly what's going on. Yeah. And then the third would be build a team, build, get the right coach. If you're new to it, then I would look into a health coach that understands this, that's aligned with your goals. Having your goals, you can match the right you know, coach for that. Functional medicine doctor, if there's someone in the area, I think that would be great or has a functional medicine background. I'm taking on some key clients, focus more on longevity and things like that in my health coaching journey. Right now, still invitation beta type program, but, but if someone really wants to get optimized this way and, and they can- How can they reach you? How, where could um, they go Instagram, to reach you? They... Instagram is, yeah. is uh, an easy, easy way. Instagram is at J-O-H-N-B-E-J, John Bedge. John is my middle name. I recently started using my first name, Soul Paul. Uh, I'm going to update that. <laughs> we'll add it to the, we're going to add it to the notes here. Uh, your Instagram, <laughs> and then do you have a website or anything like that? Or no? Yeah. Instagram is uh, so I, yeah, Instagram for now, but I do have a, a website in development for, I have a website for, okay. for fractional CMO marketing services, which is firstclassalliance.com. So first class alliance for that. Alliance. And then the functional medicine health coaching, that's the certification that I'm working on. That one is in the works, but I have a really cool name. Got a whole, everything's cool. Right now it's just been more invitation through people that I know. And, and Instagram would be a, a way to get on the okay. waiting list for that. Perfect. I'm going to read, yeah. I'm going to put that in the notes as well. And, and I really thank you for your time today. I really appreciate your time and thank you so much. Yeah, no, you got it. I I enjoyed it. I know like those 12 pillars were like way too much to talk about because we talked about for two I mean, hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but those three- I want to get to yeah, the reality of someone listening is that how did they begin that? I think that's the question. I think that's, you've answered that. I think that part, I wanted people to really get that real part. Yeah. And I mean, I the can type give of you... questions I have when I listen to it. Yeah. When I listen to you, I, mean, I want to understand. How I can it be 12... in your shoes? That's how I want I mean, to figure out. I think you start off like with what you can handle, right? Basically, we talked yeah. about like those three, and then you start to put together your own protocol. So yeah. start off with like basic supplementation. Some of the one that are generally most people need is, is a good methyl multivitamin and vitamin D3 is so key. And you got to supplement that with K2. I take 5,000 I per day in vitamin D3. Omega-3s are so key, two grams of EPA and one gram of DHA at a minimum. And then you can do more if you're trying to, to lose weight. Uh, magnesium, the five different types that I mentioned, I think everybody needs that. They can do one, one magnesium supplement has it all, which is fine. I like to pull the levers and measure and be able to get the morning ones that give you energy and the night ones that make you tired separate. Sure. So it's not like an upper or downer together. That's my own thing and I, I heard 
other people really talk about that, but it's what I do. Plant-based protein, I think it's really key as well because if, if you're not intentional about having enough protein, you're not getting enough. And you don't want to overconsume meat as well because that could speed up your rate of aging if you care about that. But a lot of plant-based protein and powders, I just it's it's just hard to get around that. So really quick on that, I, I do a little bit of protein, pea protein, which can also too much of it is also not good because it does have lectins. So a little bit of that, but I also have hemp uh, protein, a little bit of that. And then I do a lot of lentils and then do sprouted lentils in particular. I'm sprouting every day. So I have, it's part of my everyday regimen of sprouted black lentils in particular, organic black lentils sprouted. Someone can learn about that. That's really uh, key. And I get a lot of protein that way. And then I also have another protein, choco, which comes from the Andes mountains and that has no lectins and it's a very clean protein. So that's, those are my main protein sources. And then I have meat-based protein, a little bit of other uh, chicken, not that often. And if I do pasture raise, I make it my own. I don't eat chicken out. A little bit of fish, minimal, a lot from plants, broccoli, and things like that. And then proteins, ground beef, one one pound a yeah, week, split to three, three so on. Six. And then coll- collagen peptides. I think it's another really yeah. important thing to just maintain your skin and your yeah. tendons yeah. and yeah. ligaments yeah. and so many things within your body yeah. and has protein as well. And then last thing I would say, creatine for maintaining muscle mass, also great for sure. the mind. That's like a basic stack that I think most people- yeah can do on. And then from there, I think I would go in precision supplementation based on your blood work and you can adjust it. So common thing is going to be lipids, your LDL, HDL. Those are common things to optimize. Um, And cardiovascular health, I think is so important. So right now I'm optimizer around my lipids and then my ApoB and just overall cardiovascular health. So I have this whole regimen around that. And so yeah, it's quite I a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to at least. But I, give think, that, I think we got that, the message. I think people are going to get the message. Stack and I hope people this could is the, start with the jumping point to people's journey. That's really, I think, the the part that I hope that they got the message that they can start looking up some of these items and contact you. I think on Instagram, which would be great. But hopefully, this is going to inspire a lot of people to begin. Yeah. That, uh, if anybody that, has any journey to help. Absolutely. So yeah, if anyone has any questions or even the brands that I take and things like that, I can, yeah. I, I'm happy to share that. I've done a lot of research to finding the, the good, clean brands, third party tested, and they're not one company. They're all over the place and I don't have any affiliation or and not being compensated by them, but I can certainly, if people who want to reach out, go ahead and eventually I'll put you in a waiting list. And when I do launch the program open to the public. Awesome. So. Okay. Thanks so much, Saul. Okay. Thank you, Dustin. We'll talk soon. Appreciate it. Hi, everyone. Dr. Goyle here. I hope you enjoyed today's talk with Sol. A lot of interesting tidbits there. And do look in the links for his Instagram. He did mention about tracking his protocols. And just want to remind you, we do have an app called Karma by PQ Human, where you can track all of your protocols and your to-do items. And I use that myself for all of the 30 different things that I want to track. So again, Karma by PQ Human, available by, on your Apple Store, App Store, as well as Google Play. And then, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Please can subscribe and we'll talk to you soon.